A serial killer is typically a person who murders three or more people. Usually in service of abnormal psychological gratification, with the murders taking place over more than a month and including a significant break, a cooling off period, between them. The seven creepiest serial killers in American history. 7. Edmund Kemper. Number of victims, 10. Fate, life imprisonment with the possibility of parole. Edmund Emil Kemper III born December 18, 1948, also known as the co-ed butcher or the co-ed killer, is an American serial killer, necrophile and suspected cannibal who committed the abduction and murder of several women in the early 1970s, as well as the murders of both of his paternal grandparents and his mother. Born in California, Kemper had a turbulent childhood. He moved to Montana with his abusive mother at a young age before returning to California where he murdered his paternal grandparents when he was 15. He was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic prior to his conviction of murder and sentencing to the Atascadero State Hospital as a criminally insane juvenile. Released at the age of 21 after convincing Atascadero psychiatrists he was rehabilitated, Kemper was regarded as innocent and non-threatening by his victims. He solely targeted young female hitchhikers during his killing spree, luring them into his vehicle and driving them to quiet areas where he would murder them before taking their corpses back to his home to be violated and desecrated, with Kemper often keeping the severed heads of his victims for several days before disposal. He then murdered his mother and one of her friends before turning himself into the authorities. He was found sane and guilty at his trial in 1973 and requested the death penalty for his crimes. However, capital punishment was temporarily suspended in California and he instead received eight life sentences. Since then, Kemper has been incarcerated in the California Medical Facility. Kemper is known for his large stature and high intelligence, standing 6 foot 9 inches 2.06 meters tall, weighing over 250 pounds or 114 kilograms and having a reported IQ of 145, features that left his victims with little chance to overcome him. Kemper was released from psychiatric care at 21, moved in with his mother, and began killing hitchhikers and engaging in necrophilia with their corpses after fights with his mother. After six murders, Kemper beat his own mother to death with a claw hammer, decapitated her had sex with her head and then used it as a dartboard. For good measure, he invited his mother's best friend over to the house and killed her, too. Afterwards, Kemper called the police and turned himself in. Despite requesting the death penalty, which was apparently a childhood fantasy, Kemper was sentenced to life in prison. 6. Albert Fish Number of Victims At Least 4 Fate Electrocuted in 1936. Hamilton Howard Albert Fish was an American serial killer. He was also known as the Gray Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, and the Boogie Man. A child rapist and cannibal, he boasted that he had children in every state, and at one time stated the number was about 100. However, it is not known whether he was referring to rapes or cannibalization nor is it known if the statement was truthful. He was a suspect in at least five murders during his lifetime. Fish confessed to three murders that police were able to trace to a known homicide, and he confessed to stabbing at least two other people. He was put on trial for the kidnapping and murder of Grace Budd, and was convicted and executed by electric chair. His crimes were dramatized in The Gray Man, starring Patrick Bacha as Fish. Fish was a sadomasochist gay rapist, cannibal, and pedophile who believed God was telling him to torture and mutilate children. He was an especially prolific child molester, who was believed to have abused more than 400 children despite having been married and fathered six children of his own. Fish was even said to have initially been a dedicated father, but he devolved into having his children beat him with a nail-studded paddle to gain sexual satisfaction when he was wasn't driving needles into his own groin for the same reason. Eventually Fish moved on to murdering and eating young children, which was bad enough. But afterwards, he tormented one of his victim's parents with a description of what he had done. 5. Richard Trenton Chase Number of Victims, 6. 
fate, committed suicide in 1980. Richard Trenton Chase, May 23, 1950, December 26, 1980, was an American serial killer who killed six people in a span of a month in Sacramento, California. He was nicknamed the Vampire of Sacramento because he drank his victims' blood and cannibalized their remains. Richard Trenton Chase was killing cats at age 10 and showed all the signs of becoming a nasty little psychopath when he veered into heavy drug use and eventually was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Over time, his behavior became increasingly bizarre and violent as he became convinced that he needed the blood of other living things to keep his own body from withering away. He started out by killing and disemboweling rabbits, which he then ate raw, but moved on to birds, cats, dogs, and, eventually, human beings. Despite the fact that Chase had freely admitted to eating raw rabbits while he was committed, had called a family whose dog he killed to tell them what he had done, and his mother had seen him rip open and devour a dead cat, he was left to his own devices. He started out with a drive-by shooting. From there, he murdered a pregnant woman, had sex with her corpse, and ate part of the body. Finally, he killed a man, a woman, and two children, had sex with the woman's dead body, and again fed on the corpses. After the police arrested Chase, they found blood splattered across almost everything in his apartment and the brain of the 22-month-old child that Chase had killed was found in a Tupperware dish. On December 29, 1977, Chase killed his first known victim in a drive-by shooting. The victim, Ambrose Griffin, was a 51-year-old engineer and father of two. After the shooting, one of Griffin's sons reported seeing a neighbor walking around their East Sacramento neighborhood with a .22 caliber rifle. The neighbor's rifle was seized, but ballistics tests determined that it was not the murder weapon. He attempted to enter the home of the woman two weeks later but because her doors were locked, he walked away. Chase later told detectives that he took locked doors as a sign that he was not welcome, but unlocked doors were an invitation to come inside. He was once caught and chased off by a couple returning home as he pilfered their belongings. He had also urinated and defecated on their beds and clothing. Teresa Wallen was Chase's next victim, on January 23, 1978. Three months pregnant at the time, Wallen was surprised at her home by Chase, who shot her three times, killing her using the same gun he used to kill Griffin. He then raped her corpse while stabbing her several times with a butcher knife. He then removed multiple organs, cut off one of her nipples and drank the blood. Before leaving, he collected dog feces from the yard and stuffed it into the victim's mouth and down her throat. On January 27, Chase committed his final murders. Entering the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Meredith, he encountered her friend, Danny Meredith, whom he shot with his .22 handgun. Stealing Meredith's wallet and car keys, he rampaged through the house, fatally shooting Meredith, her six-year-old son Jason, and her 22-month-old nephew David Ferreira. As with Wallen, Chase engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism with Meredith's corpse. A six-year-old girl with whom Jason Meredith had a play date knocked on the door, startling Chase, who fled the scene in Meredith's car, taking David's body with him. The girl alerted a neighbor, who then alerted the police. Upon entering the home, police discovered that Chase had left perfect handprints and shoe imprints in Meredith's blood. 4. Carl Penn's Room Number of Victims, 21 Plus Fate, Hanged in 1930 Carl Panstrom was a misanthrope who committed evil for evil's its sake. In fact, just before he was executed, he said, I wish the entire human race had one neck and I had my hands around it. Those words were in keeping with the life he lived. Panstrom was an extremely active career criminal, a prolific arsonist who particularly enjoyed torching churches, a thief's thief, and a habitual rapist who claimed to have violated a thousand men. I wasn't very particular either. I wrote him old and young, tall and short, white and black. It made no difference to me at all except that they were human beings. After buying a yacht with the loot he collected during a robbery of William Howard Taft's house, yes, really, he started hiring sailors to work his boat, took them out on the water, robbed them, raped them, 
murdered them, and then dumped their corpses into the sea. Panjim was constantly on the move. He was even in Africa, where he hired six men, killed them all, and fed their bodies to the crocodiles. He also raped and killed a 12-year-old boy there. Soon thereafter, he raped another young boy, about whom he uttered this charming sentiment. His brains were coming out of his ears when I left him. I am not sorry. My conscience doesn't bother me. I sleep sound and have sweet dreams. After that, he again raped and killed a young boy that he came upon and said that was his favorite murder, apparently because the boy spent so much time begging and pleading for his life before Pansum strangled him to death. After he was finally caught and imprisoned for the last time, he was asked how it felt to kill a young child. His response was, I hate all the effing human race. I get a kick out of murdering people. That should have been on his tombstone. 3. At gain. Number of victims, 2. Fate, died of heart failure in 1984 while confined at Mendota Mental Health Institute. It's cheating a bit to put gain on here, since he only has two confirmed kills and therefore doesn't technically fit the definition of a serial killer which requires three or more. However, it's hard to do a list like this and leave off the killer who helped inspire Norman Bates from Pisco, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. After his mother died, Gain, along with his brother, started robbing the graves of middle-aged women. Gain was using their body parts and skin to make furniture, along with a woman's suit of his own, made out of real human skin. After his brother died under mysterious circumstances, the police suspected Ed Gain was responsible, but they were never able to prove it. Meanwhile, dead bodies apparently weren't cutting it anymore for Gain because he moved on to killing two local women. When police eventually raided his home because he was spotted at the scene of a murder, they discovered human noses, vulvae, skulls made into bowls, skin masks, human heads and sacks. Lamps and chairs upholstered in human flesh, organs in the refrigerator, and a belt made of human nipples. That was in addition to a human torso hanging from the ceiling, shrunken heads, and human lips used as part of the drawstring of a window shade. 2. Jeffrey Dahmer Number of Victims, 17 Fate Beaten to death with a broomstick handle in 1994 while serving 15 life terms. Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, May 21, 1960, November 28, 1994, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was an American serial killer and sex offender, who committed the rape, murder, and dismemberment of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Many of his later murders involved necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preservation of body parts, typically all are part of the skeletal structure. Although diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and a psychotic disorder, Dahmer was found to be legally sane at his trial. Convicted of 15 of the 16 murders he had committed in Wisconsin, Dahmer was sentenced to 15 terms of life imprisonment on February 15, 1992. He was later sentenced to a 16th term of life imprisonment for an additional homicide committed in Ohio in 1978. On November 28, 1994, Dahmer was beaten to death by Christopher Scarver, a fellow inmate at the Columbia Correctional Institution. Dahmer was a gay alcoholic who seemed to spiral deeper and deeper into madness as he grew older. His typical modus operandi was to frequent local gay bars and lure young men back to his apartment by offering them money. He would then drug, rape, and sometimes torture them before eventually strangling them to death. Afterwards, he sometimes had sex with the dead bodies before dissolving them in chemicals or worse yet, eating them. Dahmer even attempted to lobotomize some of his victims in order to turn them into sex slaves. He even claimed one of his victims survived for four days after he drilled into his brain. When the police finally searched Dahmer's apartment, among the items found were four skulls in the refrigerator and three torsos in a barrel. 1. John Wayne Gacy Number of Victims, 33 Fate, executed by lethal injection in 1994 John Wayne Gacy Jr., 
March 17, 1942, May 10, 1994, was an American serial killer and rapist. He sexually assaulted, tortured and murdered at least 33 teenage boys and young men between 1972 and 1978 in Cook County, Illinois, a part of metropolitan Chicago. All of Gacy's known murders were committed inside his Norwood Park ranch house. His victims were typically lured to his address by force or deception, and all but one victim were murdered by either asphyxiation or strangulation with a makeshift tourniquet. His first victim was stabbed to death. Gacy buried 26 of his victims in the crawl space of his home. Three further victims were buried elsewhere on his property, while the bodies of his last four known victims were discarded in the Day Plains River. Convicted of 33 murders, Gacy was sentenced to death on March 13, 1980 for 12 of those killings. He spent 14 years on death row before he was finally executed by lethal injection at Stateville Correctional Center on May 10, 1994. Gacy became known as the Killer Clown because of his charitable services at fundraising events, parades, and children's parties where he would dress as Pogo the Clown, a character he devised himself. Gacy is particularly disturbing because he was a pillar of the community. Not only did he perform as a clown at children's parties, but he was also a married, successful businessman. Gacy did volunteer work in his neighborhood and what was a chaplain of the JCs. In addition, he was active in the local Democratic Party. He was a Democratic precinct captain and once was even photographed with Rosalind Carter. That was the face that John Wayne Gacy presented to the public. In private, upstanding citizen Gacy was a serial rapist and murderer of young boys. He raped and strangled them to death, on three occasions, he even killed two in the same day. When the police finally caught up with Gacy, they found the bodies of 28 young men and boys in the crawl space under his house. 